been a really interesting journey um quite a lot of ups and downs but i think for us we've always focused on the impact so we never let you know all the problems that would exist in running a 24-hour service in, in in nigeria in lagos and abuja uh, to stop us we are really focused we're a focused team uh, so it's been really incredibly rewarding i think that's the big thing um, every day when we know we're helping people we we feel so fortunate to be able to do what we're doing and i'm speaking for myself as well as everybody at life bank tech is so critical uh, we couldn't do what we do at life bank without technology uh, we consider ourselves a tech company uh, first and um, that is so important to what we do it allows us to gather inventory information very seamlessly Whereas if we wanted to do something like that, we would have to have a lot of money. <laughs> uh, but tech really helps us leapfrog a lot of the capital required to do what we do. Uh, so it's really inc like we couldn't do what we do without technology. Uh, we're using tech in a wide variety of ways around gathering inventory information we use technology uh, we use technology products like blockchain uh, to bring transparency into the blood system um, we use technology in terms of how hospitals actually request what they need we use technology even boats that we launch uses technology uh, so we really and we use you know both high and low tech so high tech like blockchain ai and low tech like you know sms ussd uh system uh to really do what we do so we yeah <laughs> we, we really rely on technology to do to do our work it's going <laughs> it's not gone i mean one million we're still a bit far from one million um, we are about we have about five thousand blood donors right now, so we are really reaching out to Nigerians to come into giving blood regularly um, and help us meet our goal to get to one million voluntary donors. Uh, we've moved about sixteen thousand units uh, in our system, saved five thousand six hundred lives, um, helped over two hundred over four hundred hospitals. Um, and really, really, like, and that grows every minute. Literally, since we started this conversation, we've moved a couple units of blood that went to save someone's life. So we're constantly, there are riders all over uh, two cities in Nigeria, constantly delivering, constantly doing important work. Yeah, we've, you know, catered for about 400 hospitals and saved about 5,600 lives. So boats uh, simply is a platform that we built. We know that a lot of times as a distributor, um, people will call us asking for um, access to these resources, right? You know, somebody called me a couple of, uh, I think about a year ago, crying, a woman, older woman, crying, begging, because she wanted to, her daughter-in-law was having a baby and she needed blood. Um, and she was just begging and I felt so touched by the way she she spoke and we were able to help her but we know that that's not sustainable you know she didn't have any money to pay us she had put some money together but she didn't have enough um and she had borrowed everything that she could borrow and she simply did not have the cash um and we knew that if we kept doing that for everybody who asked we would not be able to break even and we would not have a business so we knew we needed to find a more sustainable way of helping the most vulnerable members of our community. So we built both to gather um, private capital, to have companies, uh, folks, you know, donate to both, and then uh, push um, to make sure that when, and then rely on hospitals and doctors and medical team to request on behalf of their patients when blood is needed, when oxygen is needed, and they know that they cannot afford it, thereby saving thousands and thousands of lives uh, because you know a lot of times when doctors say you need five bags of blood and the person knows they don't have the money they would go around it could take up to 24 hours 72 hours before they finally get a loan from everybody they know to buy these supplies 
and often by the time they find the money the patient is dead so for us we have this services and we have we built both to be able to at least for blood and oxygen and hopefully medicine in the next couple of weeks uh, to be able to guarantee that you will have access to what you need uh, regardless of how much money you have the response has been really good uh, of course i think we can do more we the goal is to raise about 100 million and so far we've raised only about six i think um, and we want to raise want to raise more and more and more to be able to help more and more and more people the goal is to have both save about 800,000 lives and um, yeah patients don't register on both doctors do hospitals do because we rely on them to tell us that a patient has not been able to pay but it takes a minute to register. So if you're a hospital, you've not registered on both. Of course, it's easier when you are registered because we know you. But if you're a hospital, you've never registered and you actually have a patient who can't afford it, then you can connect to us and then we'll walk through the system and be able to help you. Um, we just walk you through how to, we'll just register you there and there and then help the patient. Uh, and then subsequently, whenever, you know, whenever people need these services um, in your hospital, then you're already registered. But we really want people to register, pre-register so we can know who they are and get, already get familiar with their hospital. Um, but, you know, you don't need that because we don't want to save it. We don't want to lose, it, lose someone because they did not register. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, there, yes, there's a lot of need in the north. There's a lot of need all over the country, south, south. It's really bad as well. Um, so we want to expand. But like you said, <laughs> if I had a magical wand today and I can do this, dumb, Life Bank would be in every single town in Nigeria. Uh, but that, that requires a lot of capital um, and it requires a lot of can-do attitude. It requires a lot of help in our community, and right now we've not had as much of that. Um, but we'll continue to work uh, to make sure that we can reach more and more and more and more people. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, having these sort of events, speaking to them, speaking to you, um, it's really, really important to get the word out about what we're doing for both, but also Life Bank. Um, and to get more and more hospitals because we really can't help anybody if hospitals are not calling us, right? We, d we don't want patients to call us themselves. We want hospitals and doctors to take the responsibility. So we need to reach them. We need to talk to them and get them to come in to, to helping us. So first, I only need 1% of Nigerians to give blood regularly to have enough blood, right? You don't need every single Nigerian. You need just 1%. And I know that there's more than 1% of Nigerians who are committed to saving uh, people around their community, right? So I think what we need to do is educate the, com the, the public, tell stories, be clear, be honest. For example, a lot of people are always concerned that, oh, I give blood for free, but you sell my blood. So we're, you know, we're working on a campaign, maybe we'll share that with you guys, but we're working on a campaign um, to tell people that, you know, it is not, blood is not sold, it is the services to make the blood safe that is sold. Uh, so it just requires education. For example, before I started this work, I didn't know that. I used to think that people were selling blood, but they were not, they're not selling the blood because it costs a lot of money to make blood safe for use for someone else. Um, and that's what the patient ends up paying for. So, but, you know, generally I think people just need to be educated, you know. We've been able to convince Okada riders, you know, bank MDs. Do, do you understand like the different, you know, mentality between those two people? But we've been able to convince both people to give blood voluntarily. And uh, we'll continue to do that. We know, we know, we know what it takes, and we'll continue to commit to that.